Unless you plan on modifying the contents of an entire layer, what you'll need to do in Photoshop is make a selection and then manipulate that selection. There are several ways you can make selections in Photoshop, and we'll go through each of the different options so that you can use the best tool for whatever situation you happen to be in. So now we have this image of a dog, and it's on a white background. The dog is not separate from the white background. Sometimes if you're dealing with clip art or royalty-free art, you might get an image of something on a white background, and you need to separate that image from its background so that you can turn it onto another background color or do something with it. Anyway, there's a first set of tools here called your marquee selection tools. There's the rectangular marquee, the elliptical marquee, a single row, and a single column marquee. To use these tools, You'll grab one and then click and drag around the selected area and release to make a selection. Now the little dotted lines that are moving, I call those the marching ants. That sets the boundaries for your selection. And then once you have your selection, you can do something with it. So for instance, if we wanted to do something with this rectangular selection, we could copy it and then we could paste it. And when we paste it, it gets pasted onto its own layer. So here's me hiding the background layer, or actually it's not a background layer, it's a regular layer. And then here's that other layer, and the rest of the area around it is transparency. Now sometimes you might not want a rectangular shape, you want the actual shape. But before we get there, let's talk about something that's going up on the options bar. When you make a selection, you can add to the selection by clicking on the second button. So if I do this, and this, and this, and that, I'm adding to the selection, so whatever was there before, I'm adding. Whereas when you have the first button selected, anytime you click and drag, you're releasing the old selection and creating a new one. So there's adding to the selection, creating new selections. There's also subtracting from selections, so you could do something like this. And then there is, uh, let's go back to add to it. And then there's this fourth button, which deals with intersecting shapes within a selection. So if I do something like this, it's only going to leave me with the intersecting shapes. You can toggle these buttons on and off, but remember, whichever one you leave it on will remain selected until you change it later. And one thing I like to do is leave it on the first one, and then if I want to add to the selection, I hold down my Shift key, which puts a plus button next to my cursor so that I can add other pieces to the selection. And then if I ever need to subtract, I just hold down my Alter Option key, and that puts a minus sign next to my selection tool, and I could subtract those little pieces, like so. Once you have your selection, you could actually click and adjust how that selection fits around your object or objects by clicking inside of the marching ants. If you click outside, the cursor changes and it presumes that you want to change the selection, but inside you could actually move it around. But if you were to grab your black arrow, your move tool, and then put your cursor inside of it, look what happens to the cursor. It's a little scissors, which means you could actually, and I have to be on the correct layer for this to work, you could actually click and drag and move that selected piece from its original position. I'm going to undo with my keyboard shortcut because we're going to move on to some of the other selection options. If you want to create a square shape, you could try to eyeball it, and with Smart Guides turned on, you can see the width and height, and you could try to drag out and match the shape, but that might be pretty tricky to do. An easier solution is to hold down the Shift key. The Shift key will constrain your selection shape to exactly the same width and height, so creating a perfect square. And then when you release your mouse key and release the Shift key, you get that perfect selection. You can do the same thing with the elliptical marquee tool. If you don't hold down your shift key, you can create what might look like a perfect circle. Or if you want to hold down your shift key, you can create that perfect circle. And just like before, using these buttons here at the top of the screen, if the first button is selected, anytime you click and drag, you're creating a new selection, but you can add to the selection, subtract from the selection, or do the intersecting shapes. Or what I like to do, again, holding down my shift key to add to the selection, or holding down my Alter Option key to subtract from the selection. Now when you have a selection, I'm just going to start over with a little oval shape. When you have your selection, you can actually apply a feather to it here in the Feather field. 
So you can use the scrubby to increase the feather, although I personally prefer to add the feather before I make the selection. And that feather amount is going to stay there in that dialog box unless or until you change it. So that's something that I try to keep in mind whenever I use that option. So typically, I keep it off, and instead I will use the Refine Edge dialog box. Actually, let me cancel this selection and make a new selection with the zero on, like so. So clicking the Refine Edge dialog box gives me some options to modify and improve my selection. This first area is the view mode, and there's a bunch of different ways that you can view your selected area. You can view it with the marching ants like you would see in normal view. You can use mask overlay so you can see the area that you have inside the selection in the white area and the areas outside the selection in the red area. The red area could be on black instead or on white if you had a darker image. Or you could just do black and white just to isolate the mask itself or the selection itself rather or on layers, so revealing it, the subtracted areas, or just see the whole thing. So I actually prefer the overlay version, but you can certainly work with whichever one you like. There's also an option to show the radius and show the original, and this will depend on what you've selected, whether or not changing those will do anything for you. Smart radius is something that I like to turn on because it will automatically adapt to the image's edges. Now here I have just a simple circle shape, but if I had made a uh, more detailed selection, this would improve the selection around the edges. It does sort of edge detection and it does improve the edges, in which case you can adjust the radius. You can also adjust the edge of your selection to smooth it out, whether it's really hard and crisp or a little bit softer. You could apply a feather here. So here's where I tend to apply the feather after making the selection and that doesn't modify the feather in my options bar. You can apply a contrast to that edge with or without the feather and you could even shift the edge inwards or outwards to increase or decrease the edge of your selection. I'm just going to put that back to zero. When you have this the way you like it, you can click OK and those settings will be part of your selection. Then you can do something with that selection. So just as an example, one thing you could do is say, I want to copy this. So you could copy that and then you could paste it onto its own layer and then we'll hide that layer. So now we have a dog with that feathered background edge inside of this circle shape. Now, if you needed to create a single row or single column, you could just click once and then you could fill that with a solid color. So just to demonstrate, with a layer selected, let me pick this doggy layer, edit stroke, and then you could fill that stroke or apply a color to that stroke in whatever width you wanted. You could do it inside, center, or outside of the stroke, and then click OK. Command or Control D will deselect your selection, and then you could see that I've permanently added that stroke to that layer. Now, if you need more precise selections, there's other tools that you can use. There's this lasso tool, which will allow you to rope around like a cowboy around the outer edges of a shape. You can use this roughly or loosely. It's totally up to you. Sometimes I find that it helps with refining a selection. So you can use your shift key to add to your selection or your alt or option key to subtract from the selection. Just loop around in a complete circle. It doesn't have to be precise, but that will help you with making those changes while you're working. This is really just to give you an idea of how this would work. But then you have your selection, then you can do something with it again. You could copy and paste it onto its own layer, you can move it, you could do whatever you want to it. Now if you need something a little more precise, underneath the lasso tool are two other special tools. There's the polygonal lasso tool and the magnetic lasso tool. Let me show you that on this leather case image. With the polygon lasso tool, you'll click and set down anchor points around the outer edges of your object. And you can click as many times as you like to set down the anchor points. If you have straight lines, you only need to click once the length of it, but you know, around this edge or something, I might have to click a few times, but here I could do one straight line. And over here, I might do a few clicks in a straight line. And I'm just gonna crudely finish the rest, presuming that I had spent the time to do this really nicely and cleanly. When you get towards the end of the shape, and you need to close the shape, the selection shape, 
When you put your cursor near the starting point, you'll see that your cursor gets a little circle. You see that? Right now it doesn't have it, but when I put it on the beginning point of the selection area, a circle appears. If I click there, I can close the shape. So now I have a closed shape with the Polygon Lasso tool. And this is good if you're doing architectural renderings or images with nice hard edges. And of course, you can toggle between the different shapes while you're working. So while I was working, I could have certainly toggled between the polygonal and the regular lasso tool to add to my selection. So let's say I wanted to make this nice and smooth. I can kind of go around this way like that to add to the selection or kind of go backwards and subtract from the selection. You can combine these as often as you need it. Now to deselect, go to the select menu and choose deselect or command or control D will deselect as well. For something like this though, something with a lot of different edge planes, you might prefer to use the magnetic lasso tool, which is like the polygonal lasso tool, plus it has this magnetic feature which will hug the outer edges of your object and set down anchor points for you. And I'm just sort of dragging along the outer edge. I could speed things along by setting down my own anchor points, or I could let Photoshop do its own thing while I cruise around the outer edges here. And it's just dropping the anchor points in as it sees fit. It'd probably be more obvious when I get around to the top of the bag. But it's really hugging the edges. It's doing edge detection. And it's looking for areas where the color within the area being selected differs from the color outside the selection. So clicking and clicking. I'm just going to do a couple more here to get around this. And same as with the regular polygonal lasso tool, when you get towards the beginning, that little circle appears, and if you click on the opening anchor point for your selection, you will close it. And that's a much nicer, cleaner selection. Didn't take me that much longer than before, but it's easier to work with. And like the other selection types, you can do anything you want with your selection once you have it selected. Let's deselect our selection and switch tools. Another way to make selections is to work with what's called the magic wand tool. I love this tool. All you really need to do is click once on the artboard on any color and the same color will be selected within a radius. The radius is determined by the tolerance number seen here in the options bar. So 32 is the sampling range. Since it's all white, that was easy. But if I had a image with a lot more color in it, I may need to increase or decrease the tolerance to really only get the colors that I want. Other options up here, under sample size, you could do a 3x3, three 5x5 three, five five average. It's just sampling a particular area if you wanted to specify that. In this case, we're dealing with just a single point, but you can increase the size. There's your tolerance to adjust. And then there's some options. Anti-aliasing will smooth the edges of your selection, dealing with semi-transparent pixels. It's always a good to turn it on whenever you see it. I always turn it on just to make smoother, cleaner selections. Contiguous means touching. So if contiguous is turned on, you will only get the areas that touch other areas with a similar color from wherever you initially clicked. If you turn it off, and I'll deselect my selection again, and I click again, this time it will get everything, no matter where it is in the document. Think of it like the contiguous United States, where all the states that are on the continent between Canada and Mexico, not including Alaska and Hawaii. So contiguous would be just within the continent, and uh, turning it off means everywhere, all the states in the United States. So I usually will turn it off for an image like this, but then there may be some cleanup areas that I need to go back in, and that's where my lasso tool might come in handy, where I would hold down my Alter Option key and subtract these areas from the selection until I have it nice and clean. And then I've selected everything but the object that I really want. Then I would do this, go to my Select menu, and choose inverse. Depending on what it is that you're trying to select, sometimes selecting everything except the object and then inversing the selection is the smarter way to go. Now let's say we just put in all this time and we think we might need to reuse the selection again. There's a few different options that we have so that we can save and reuse the selection for a later time. One of the ways to do it is to save it through the select menu and you can choose the save selection option. Here we can choose the document if we had one or more documents open or create a new document for the selection. We can choose the channel, and we'll talk about channels in a second, and then we can give it a name. 
since there are no other channels here, we can just give it a name and I'll call this doctor's bag. And we don't have to worry about spacing or punctuation or anything. You can just type whatever it is that you want to call it. And new channel. Clicking OK. Now there is a panel for the channels next to the layers panel. And if you click on the tab, you can view it. And you'll see that I've just saved that selection, which means that I can use it again. I have also previously made a selection around the free weights, which is on another layer in my document, and save that for later use. So now I can deselect my selection. And then if I ever needed that selection again, I can come up to my Select menu, choose Load Selection, choose the name of my saved selection, and click OK. And then I've reselected it. I'm going to deselect with my keyboard shortcut. You could also come to your Layers channel directly, choose that layer, and click on this button here at the bottom to make a selection from your selection, and then come back. Or you could click on the thumbnail itself, holding down your Command or Control key, clicking right on the thumbnail to make the selection. Then you can go on and work with your selection. It's just a nice feature to have. So that's saving your selections and working with the channels. You could also save your selection as a path. Now sometimes you might need to save your selection as a path. Let's say, for instance, you're going into an old version of Quark and you need to mask away the background area and only show part of it. We'll have another exercise a little bit later where you can save your selection as a path. So I won't go into that here, but there is a whole path panel where you can save and reuse your selections there. I'm going to deselect this again and we'll move on to the next thing, which is making selections with quick mask mode. Let's take a look at the fish layer. Quick mask mode is a way of making selections with your paintbrush. And it's a little weird to sort of wrap your head around initially, but once you start working with it, I think you'll really like this way of making selections. So let me show you one other thing first. If I were to use the magic wand tool and click in the white area, I might get a pretty good selection, although you could see that I'm missing some of the areas around the outer edges. Maybe it's not perfect. There's another option underneath the magic wand tool called the Quick Selection tool. Now you could use this to select areas that are contiguous to the area that you're working in. And it's always adding to the selection unless you hold down the Alt or Option key to subtract from the selection. And this is another refinement tool that you might really want to work with. So I'm going to add to the selection here. And then of course you can inverse your selection. But if you needed to refine your selection, like around the gills and the face and everything, to really make it perfect, what you might want to do is go into what's called Quick Mask Mode. You can get there by clicking this button at the bottom of your Tools panel. And when you click inside of it, what you're seeing is the areas that are selected in white and the areas that are not selected in red. Now, you could do one of two things. I'm going to get out of Quick Mask Mode for a second. See, right now, before, we had selected everything but the fish. And what we really want is the fish. So probably what I would do before going in Quick Mask Mode is inverse the selection, because that's what I really want. I want the fish and not the background. Then going into quick mask mode, we can see that the red areas are the mask, and the non-red areas are the fish. But in this case, I can't really see clearly, because there's a lot of red in my fish. So what I might want to do is double click on that tool, and then I could change the color. So in this case, I don't have any blue. I could work with a blue mask, and that will make it easier for me to see what I'm working with. I also personally like to choose the selected areas rather than the masked areas while I'm working, like so. Now either way is fine the way you're working. I'm going to go back here and show you the masked areas like this. Then what you can do is you could zoom in and refine your selection. So areas that are blue are part of the mask. Areas that are not blue are part of my selection. To modify in quick mask mode, you're going to use your paintbrush tool. And you must make sure that your foreground and background colors are set to black and white before you begin. If they're a different color, you'll click this button here to reset the default colors. You could also click the D key on your keyboard to reset the colors. Then you'll grab your brush tool. If you paint with black, you are subtracting. And if you paint with white, you are adding to the selection. And you can toggle between the white and the black in your paintbrush with the X key on your keyboard. So I would want to add these little, I don't even know what those are called, those little tentacles from the fish's face by painting onto them. 
but this brush is too large. So we need to change the brush size. And we can do that in our options bar up at the top here. We can increase or decrease the size by scrubbing on the word size, by typing in a number, or by adjusting the size. So I'm going to bring it down to like two pixels. And then we can adjust the hardness or the softness. That's whether or not the edge has a hard edge or a fuzzy soft edge. And I think I might do a mostly hard edge and bring it down to like 85, 90, something like that. So now when I paint on it, I'm just adding those areas and I could get really precise. I could zoom in. I can increase or decrease the size of my brush as I'm working. And I could take as long as I need, especially if I'm working for a paying customer. Like as I get down here, I might want to decrease my brush size. Keyboard shortcut to make a note of. If you use your left and right bracket keys, which are next to your P key on your keyboard, you can increase or decrease the size of your brush. So I just did my left bracket and I decreased the size of the brush to one pixel. And then if I hit my right key, I can increase the size of the brush. So maybe I want to get right here. And then I could go around the outer edge, painting, smoothing, trying to make sure that I have everything I need. So now I might go down a little bit on my brush size and refine the selection. So what I would do is go around the entire document and make any modifications that I need. So like in here, I might want to click my X key to go to black and then just hide that little piece so there's not like a little white halo area. And then I just made a mistake, so I come in here, go like this. You can cruise all the way around your object and then uh, increase and decrease your zoom level and go through each one. And when you're ready to come out of quick mask mode, you just click the quick mask mode button again, and then you have your selection, which you can then save as a channel through the select menu or even through the channels panel. There's a button here where you can save this selection, save selection as channel like so. And it starts off with the name alpha channel. So you can name it whatever you wanted to it. I was going to write name. I should write fish and save it and use it at a later time.